Okay, what we're talking about today is habeas corpus and uh, how to do it yourself. Um, well, first of all, let's go into some of the foundational things. Um, kangaroo courts are everywhere. Okay, they're all kangaroo courts. Um, kangaroo court is a term descriptive of a sham legal proceeding in which a person's rights are totally disregarded in which the result is a foregone conclusion because of the bias of the court or other tribunal. And that's Black's Law Dictionary, 6th edition. Uh, and so why is it a kangaroo court? Well, this is why. When acting to enforce a statute and its subsequent amendments to the present date, the judge of the municipal court is acting as an administrative officer and not in a judicial capacity, okay? It's not a court. Courts administering or enforcing statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially, but merely act as an extension for the agent, for, as an agent for the involved agency, but only in a ministerial capacity and not in a discretionary capacity. It's a kangaroo court. It was prejudged from the beginning. It's not a real court. That's U.S. Uh, it is the accepted rule, not only in state courts, but in the federal courts as well, that when a judge is enforcing administrative law, they're described as mere extensions of the administrative agency for superior reviewing purposes as a ministerial clerk for the agency. They're bought and paid for. It's not a judge. He's a clerk. Judges who become involved in enforcement are mere statutes, civil or criminal in nature, or otherwise act as mere clerks for the involved agency. They're bought and paid for. It's a kangaroo court. A clerk masquerading as a judge is not competent to do anything judicial like issue orders or warrants. A clerk masquerading as a judge is operating in his private capacity and has no immunity. Ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislature. Their acts in attempting to exercise such powers are necessarily nullities. If they attempt to do anything judicial like issue a order or warrant, it's a nullity. It doesn't exist. These kangaroo courts, these clerks masquerading as judges, they're always dealing with a statute. All codes are derived from statutes. A code is a liar's opinion of what the statutes say. All filing fees are based, based on statutes. All courts are governed by statutes. All officers of the court are governed by statutes. They're all kangaroo courts. Oath. All oaths must be awful if... Uh, allowed by the common law or some statute if they are administered by persons in a private capacity or not duly authorized or a quorum non judice and void. Okay, um, so this is Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, but it's a site from the Institutes and the Laws of England by Coke. And the important thing to understand, so how do you know they're operating in their private capacity? Well, think about it. When they go outside the scope of their responsibility, they're no longer, their, their um, authority washes off of them like a dirty blanket, okay? It's, they, their authority is gone, okay? They are engaged in treason and sedition. Their authority is gone. They're in their private capacity, okay? When they're dealing with a statute, they're in their private capacity. When they're doing anything that they're not allowed to do as a judge, they're in a private capacity. And so that's all you need to know. In propria persona, okay, see the bar members video about this one. This is about bar members. In one's own proper person, it is a rule in pleading that pleas to the jurisdiction of the court must be pled in propria persona, because if pleaded by an attorney, they admit the jurisdiction. As an attorney is an officer of the court, he is presumed to plead after having obtained leave, which admits the jurisdiction. So, you can't have an attorney. You have to know the law. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. It's impossible to prove jurisdiction exists absent a substantial, substantial nexus with the state, such as a voluntary subscription to license, all jurisdictional facts supporting the claim that supposed jurisdiction exists must appear on the record of the court. U.S. Supreme Court. 
state citizens are the only ones living under free government whose rights are incapable of impairment by legislation or judicial decision. Okay, so you have to understand that. You go in there as a state citizen, then if and they just railroad you, then they're operating in their private capacity. <laughs> See that don't you get that? State citizenship is a vested substantial property right, and the state has no power to divest or impair these rights, okay? If they look at you wrong, they're operating in their private capacity. The state cannot diminish the rights of the people. That's the Supreme Court. It's a bill of attainder. All statutes and codes are bills of attainder. A bill of attainder means legislative acts, no matter what their form, that apply either to named individuals or to easily ascertainable members of a group in such a way as to inflict punishment on them without a judicial trial. Well, any statute, because the judge is a clerk, he's bought and paid for, it's not a judicial trial. Therefore, it's a bill of attainder by definition. A bill of attainder, a special legislative act prescribing punishment without a trial for a specific person or group. Bills of attainder are prohibited by the U.S. Constitution. Um, a bill of pains and penalties is a legislative act, though similar to a bill of attainder, prescribes punishment less severe than capital punishment. Bills of pains and penalties are included within the U.S. Constitution's ban on bills of attainder. And that's Black's Law Dictionary, 8th uh, edition in both cases. Capious. Capious is a writ of process, formerly two sorts, one where the court uh, uh, is called capious uh, ad respondum before judgment, where original is sued out to take the defendant, make him answer the plaintiff, and the other a writ of execution after judgment. Okay, so there's before judgment and after judgment. That's Tomlin's Law Dictionary, again, 1835 edition. And this is about the capious. This is about the after judgment. Uh, capius is called a writ of execution. It's always a capius. It's a writ of execution, but it's a capius. So they are creating a debt. This is, uh, anyways, let's get into this. Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition. Uh, a judicial writ of execution, which issues out on the record of a judgment where there is a recovery in the courts of debt and damages. And by this writ, the sheriff is commanded to take the body of the defendant in execution and keep him safely, safely to keep so that he has his body in court at the return of the writ. The body is the collateral for the debt. Um, so this is, it's a writ of execution. It's always a capius. A capius is not a warrant of arrest. There are no lawful Article 3 or Article 4 Maybe it's Article 6. Anyways, there is no such thing as a warrant. Okay? They're all capiuses. And this is taken from the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure. In this chapter, capius means a writ that is issued by a court having jurisdiction of a case after judgment and sentence and be directed to any peace officer of the state of Texas and commanding the officer to arrest a person convicted of an offense and bring the arrested person before that court immediately or on a day or at a term stated in the writ. Um, uh, capius pro fine uh, means a writ that's issued by a court having jurisdiction of a case after judgment or a sentence for unpaid fines and costs uh, directed to any peace officer of the state of Texas commanding the officer to arrest the person convicted of an offense and bring that arrested person before the court immediately and that's Texas Code of Criminal Procedure Article 43.015 definitions so it's always a capius, and I don't care what state you're in, it's always a capius, okay? There is no such thing as an ar as a lawful warrant. There are no lawful warrants. It is always a capius. They drag you into their kangaroo court, and the clerk masquerading as a judge forges your signature onto their satanic contract to fabricate evidence of a debt, then they issue a capius to their satanist order followers to further assault you, kidnap you, and falsely imprison you. No one is bound to obey an unconstitutional law. No courts are bound to enforce it. An unconstitutional act is not law. It confers no rights. It imposes no duties. It affords no protection. It creates no office. It is in legal contemplation as an operative as though it had never been passed. An unconstitutional law is void is it, and is as no law. An offense created by it is not a crime. It never became a law and was as much a nullity if it had been an act or declaration of an unauthorized assemblage of individuals. 
um, not a reaction by any judge is an exercise of his judicial function. It is not a judicial function for a judge to commit an intentional tort, even though the tort occurs in a courthouse. When a judge acts as a trespasser of the law, when a judge does not follow the law, the judge loses subject matter jurisdiction, and the judge's orders are void of no legal force or effect. And this is the most important part of what I'm trying to say here, okay? When they deny due process, when they put on their kangaroo court and their show trial, it's a nullity, okay? It's void and it's a nullity, and that's why you're doing a habeas corpus. Where a court failed to observe safeguards, it amounts to denial of due process. The court is deprived of juris, okay? When they deny due process, they lose jurisdiction. There's a guy by the name of Richard Carnforth that's got a bunch of YouTube videos, and he beats every case because of lack of subject matter jurisdiction. They always deny due process. They always lose jurisdiction, and it's not in rem, or it's, yeah, it's not in personam jurisdiction. It's in rem. It's subject matter jurisdiction. Where there is no jurisdiction, there is no judge. The proceeding is as nothing. Such has been the law for the days of Marshall Say. That's a cite by Koch, which is cited by the U.S. Supreme Court and in this other federal court case. The important thing you understand here is these are this is the argument that you're going to bring up in your habeas corpus. A void judgment is one which from its inception was a complete nullity and without legal effect. A void judgment is one which has no legal force or effect, whatever. It's an absolute nullity. Its invalidity may be asserted by any person whose rights are affected at any time and at any place. It need not be attacked directly, but may be attacked collaterally whenever and wherever it's interposed. Courts have decreed that want of jurisdiction makes all acts of judges, magistrates, U.S. Marshals, sheriffs, local police all void. Not just voidable, void. And when you have a void judgment, a remedy, if if it's before the kangaroo court in a show trial, you file a petition for a writ of prohibition. That's one of the extraordinary writs, and that's taken from Blackstone's commentaries to the laws of England. And a judgment of conviction pronounced by a court without jurisdiction is void, and one imprisoned thereunder may obtain release by habeas corpus. That's the U.S. Supreme Court. So if you're in their jail, you file for a habeas corpus. And it's non-statutory, okay? You don't need their statute. This is common law that authorizes this. The end justifies the means is satanic. These people are all Satanists, okay? They are Satanists. They need to be put to death is what they need to be. Or we're going to bring the judgments of God down on our head. And uh, so, anyways, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil and put darkness for light and light for darkness. That's Isaiah 5 and 20. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, maketh him merchandise of him or sell of him, that that thief shall die. Thou shalt put evil away from among you, okay? And as long as this evil is among us, we are going to reap the judgments of God until we put it away from among us. And through covetousness shall they with vain words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and damnation slumbereth not. Patrick Henry coined the phrase, give me liberty or give me death, after he witnessed a man flogged to death for refusing to take a license, okay? He's Satanists. Everything their so-called court does is a fraud. They spell your name in all block capital letters. A fraud. They spell your address in all block capital letters. A fraud. They use a zip code or another fraud. They present themselves as neutral and biased, when in reality they're bought and paid for. All so-called judges are actually whores selling their justice. There is no such thing as an Article Three judge because they're all territorial. These Satanists cannot speak the truth. That is one of the hallmarks of Satanism. Lies, half-truths, fraud, and deception. They criminally convert your appellation. They criminally convert your postal address. They present the judge as neutral and unbiased when he's actually bought and paid for. See the Leos and Azel, Texas, uh, uh, videos 1, 2, 3, and 4. And actually, it's pigs and nasal, but I changed it because YouTube was giving me a hassle. Everything they do is a fraud. It's color, color, okay, signifies a probable play, which is in fact false, okay? That's called, um, that's Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition. And what that is, is um, confession and avoidance is what that's called, okay? signifies a probable plea, which is in fact false. 
They lie in wait for you to say the wrong thing so they can justify selling you into slavery. It is not a court. It's a commercial transaction. They're thieves. They're Satanists. Black's Law Dictionary, 18th, uh, 8th edition, talks about give color to admit either expressly or impliedly by science that an opponent's allegations appear to be meritorious. Up here, that's uh, talking about color of law, the appearance of law. In common law pleading, a defendant's plea of confession and avoidance had to give color to the plaintiff's allegation in the complaint or the plea would be fatally defective. They assault you with their criminal corporation, and this is a Supreme Court, Rundle versus Delaware, and uh, Rerton Canal Company, U.S. Supreme Court. My opinion is and has long been that the mayor and aldermen of a city corporation or the president and directors of a bank or the president and directors of a railroad company or similar corporations are true parties that sue and are sued as trustees and representatives of the constantly changing stockholders. A corporation, therefore, being not a natural person but a mere creature of the mind, invisible and intangible, cannot be a citizen of the state or the United States and cannot fall within the terms of the power of the above mentioned article and can therefore neither plead for nor be implanted in the courts of the United States. Okay, so a corporation can has no standing to do anything in any court. Once a fraud, always a fraud. These are maxims of law. Things invalid from the beginning talk, cannot be made valid by some subsequent act. Avoid judgment. A thing void in the beginning does not become valid by lapse of time. Time cannot render valid an act void in its origin. Um, out of fraud, no action arises, and any act by any government official to conceal a fraud becomes an act of fraud. It's a fraud to conceal a fraud, and fraud is inexcusable and unpardonable. Fraud and deceit should excuse no man. These are all maxims of law, and any fraud amounts to injustice. Fraud and justice never dwell together. Uh, what is otherwise good and just is sought by force or fraud becomes bad and unjust. These are all maxims of law. You're of, of your father the devil, and the loss of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. These people are Satanists. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So, you got to be brave. Okay, otherwise you might wind up with them. They send out their U.S. citizen pigs to assault you and kidnap you and falsely imprison you as a revenue officer under their Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966. Then they hold a show trial in their kangaroo court that has a U.S. citizen prosecutor, a U.S. citizen clerk masquerading as a judge, which is an Article I military tribunal. Then they make merchandise of you and sell you into slavery. So, the bottom line is that with the habeas corpus, now we're going to get into actual habeas corpus, we're going to talk about one that worked, okay? And... You can do it, or a best friend can do it. The one we got here as an example is one that someone did for someone else. Handwritten is better. You need to put handwriting in there because that's common law, okay? So don't be bashful about doing one for yourself in the jail with handwritten. The arguments are in the first part of this presentation. All you really need is one good point of law. Um... So, first of all, you show that you were denied due process, and when you're denied due process, the court loses subject matter jurisdiction. When they lose jurisdiction, it becomes a void judgment. And if you're in jail because of the void judgment, the remedy is habeas corpus, and it's non-discretionary. They don't, many things that these judges do is discretionary. This is not discretionary. A person affected by both a void or voidable order has the right, this is actually an English court case, to have, there's a person affected by both a void and voidable order has the right to have the order set aside, which means that the court does not have discretion to refuse to set aside the order or to go into the merits of the case. This is an English court case. And so there are uh, resources. The National Liberty Alliance has habeas corpus classes. And so if you want to know more, uh, I would suggest you go there and get involved with the National Liberty Alliance, and they have habeas corpus classes just about, uh, well, several times a week. This is their website.
Yeah, right there is their website, nationallibertyalliance.org. And this is the front page, and they're talking about their weekly newsletter. And uh, if you look at the underlying part, you call this number, you log into their conference call, and it talks about filing a habeas corpus. This is actually the front page of a habeas corpus that was filed. And if you notice, that parts of it are handwritten, okay? And you need to do that stuff and handwrite the whole thing if you have to. And uh, I, I marked out the person's name um, because, uh, you know, it doesn't, nobody needs to know what it is. Um, anyways, this one actually worked, okay? And um, so this was for a prisoner who was in jail. And um, so uh, it's a petition for writ of habeas corpus, non-statutory and common law is handwritten in there, okay? And... Um, the petitioner is restrained of his liberty, paragraph one, and unlawfully, unlawfully prisoned. Um, a prisoner, a petitioner is unable to pay the fine or bail imposed. Okay, this is just one of the arguments. Um, and so it's excessive bail under the Constitution. The cause of the restraint, according to the best knowledge and belief of the prisoner, is set forth as follows. Um, and so it goes into how the judge, uh, oh, it's a Class C misdemeanor. They're non-jailable offenses. Oh, yeah, we'll get into it here up close. So it's underlined, it's handwritten, and it goes on, and we already read all this stuff. So this is the big picture, and now we want to point out some of the stuff here. This continues on that first page, um, and it's not a lawful Fourth Amendment warrant, and it's not signed by a judge, okay? Uh, the Attorney General and Maddox, Jim Maddox, this is Texas, of course, but all you need is one good point, okay? It's a void judgment. It's a denial of due process, okay? But anyways, they brought up all sorts of points. Um, unconstitutional to impose a cash bond on a person in a simple misdemeanor case or simple traffic infraction, uh, is not because he was a judge guilty of infraction charge, but only because he was unable to pay the fine or post the bail. And then the second point, um, uh, paragraph four, he's been in the jail excess of 24 hours, has not been brought before a magistrate or judge to determine the lawfulness. Uh, paragraph five, the petitioner is being restrained his liberty unlawfully, uh, has not been afforded counsel. Um in, in violation of the Sixth Amendment, and uh, they're calling about the Fourteenth Amendment. I'd never even talk about that. But another good and important point is this uh, R. Singer uh, doctrine, which states that under the law we announce today, every judge will know that the trial of misdemeanors states that no imprisonment may be imposed, even if local law permits it, unless the accused is represented by counsel. So if you don't have a lawyer, that's, that's your best situation. Fire that whore. And it goes on, um, the imprisonment is unlawful because to hold a person in arrest of his or her liberty simply because he does not have the resource to post bond on a traffic ticket is illegal. Uh, the United States Constitution, Article 5 um, of the Bill of Rights, okay, and so that's important, okay, it's Article 5, it's not the Fifth Amendment, is a guarantee to each citizen that he or she shall not be deprived of his liberty without due process of law, okay? It was a denial of due process, and that's probably, in my opinion, the most important point right there. Petitioner is entitled to present and to represent uh, her afforded by due process, and so then this is the next page. Um, under the uh, law, moreover, it's a fundamental right of every citizen to petition and redress a govern, uh, a government for grievances and never to fear imprisonment for objecting to proceedings of government. In the instant case, petitioner's desire to contest the traffic violation has been met with further punishment in which he is deprived of his prescription glasses and denied pencil and paper, thus disabling him from preparing his defense while in prison. Well, so why is that a surprise? These people are Satanists, Okay. They should be put to death. They really should. 
Petitioner should never be met by such arrogant abuse of executive and judicial authority for a minor traffic infraction. Imprisonment is clearly out of the question in such instances, and punishment amounts to a cruel and unusual punishment. Violation of petitioner's rights under federal and state constitution. Paragraph 9, the imprisonment is unlawful in that your petitioner has stated, demonstrated to the uh, county criminal court his ability, willingness, to and duty to appear in court as required to answer the charges against him. A bail bond is typically historically a guaranteed right against the risk of flight. Petitioner is not a flight risk, should be released on his own recognizance. Justice is not for sale in the Republic State of Texas. Yeah, I don't know why they went and called it Republic State of Texas, but anyways. Anyways, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled and held that the lower court that made a Virginia judge liable for attorney's fees and court costs for jailing a misdemeanor prisoner who could not post bail. Virginia Supreme Court uh, decision itself dealt with the uh, issue of judiciary immunity, not the question of whether the suspect should have been detained. Um, uh, Texas uh, case, the court established a person cannot be ordered held in jail to work out a fine if his crime is not punishable by jail time. Um, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled and held the lower court. Oh, we already read that. Anyways, so the imprisonment, uh, they go through, I mean, they got all these points. The most important one, in my opinion, is uh, because of uh, denial of due process. And this is the uh, important part I want to point out here. Um, it's whoever signed it, okay? And it says here that it's the maternal aunt as next to friend of the petitioner, okay? So anybody can do it, okay? You just call yourself the next of friend of the petitioner, and you do it for them and file it. Sign it in your name, file it. And um, these whores, these clerks masquerading as judges, you know, I, I've done one uh, for a friend of mine who... Um, who was in jail in Arlington, and they refused to accept it. But it was amazing how the same day they kicked his butt out of there. <laughs> yeah, they refused to accept it. Yeah, the clerk brought it back down and said, said because uh, the judges, they go and hide out in Arlington. They're a bunch of Satanist pigs. But, um, yeah, they hide out. You can't get access to them. And so, so the clerk had to do it. And uh, the clerks were giving us a hard time. But the bottom line is, is we got them to take it. And uh, and then they brought it down, and a judge hand wrote across a thing that was um, uh, improper format, right? <laughs> but they kicked his butt out of there the same day. And there's there's uh, uh, in the um, in the um, Judiciary Act it says that they cannot uh, deny justice because of form. Okay, so that was unconstitutional for them to do that. But that doesn't stop these whores. I mean, they're nothing but Satanists. Anyways, so then another thing you have to do is this is what this is, is um, you got to serve this on the chief of police. Okay, so you got to get this uh, stamped by the clerk is what you have to do. Actually, the clerk has to sign it. Okay, and so then you serve this on the chief of police. This is what lays out when the hearing is going to be. Chief of police or whoever's got him in jail. Okay, and so then this one here is um, where the chief of police can answer, okay? And this is a certificate of service. And so these are all things that you need to consider. Uh, it's good to make it as easy as possible for these Satanists. So that's the certificate of service. And uh, so that, that petition for habeas corpus did work. That was, uh, I think it was in 1996 when that was done. But it did work. And uh, we did one here as probably within the last year in Arlington with a friend of mine. And um, they refused to accept it. They said it's the wrong form. But they kicked his butt out there. So I would say it was a home run. Um, anyways, the Satanist by which he also went and preached to the spirits in prison. Okay, so spirit prison is, is uh, hell. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and they shall be shut up for in prison, and after many days shall they be visited. So their judgment day is coming. It's definitely coming. It behooves every man who values liberty of conscience for himself to resist invasions of it in case of others, or their case may, by change of circumstance, become his own. So, um, again, that's why I do this. 
because um, uh, I'm I'm the watchman. Okay, I uh, have to notify people uh, to make sure that my blood is clean on Judgment Day. I'm blameless. I got to be blameless. If you love wealth better than liberty, the tranquility of servitude better than the animating contest of freedom, go home from us in peace. We ask not your counsel or arms, crouch down and lick the hands which feed you. May your chains set lightly upon you, and may our posterity forget that you are ever our countrymen. And that's Samuel Adams. When it shall be said in any country of the world, my poor are happy, neither ignorance or distress is to be found among them. My jails are empty of prisoners, my streets are beggars, the A's are not in want, the taxes are not oppressive, the rational world is my friend because I am a friend of this happiness. When these things can be said, then may that country boast of its constitution and government. Well, I got to tell you that we have nothing to boast about here. We have the jails are busting at the seams, they're having to build more, there's bag people and homeless people all over the place. I would be homeless if I if I hadn't been working, uh, uh, making some half-decent money and paid for everything in cash. Um, the, uh, and, and the taxes are oppressive. Um, and um, and uh, so we have nothing to brag about. And, and I am a watchman. And I understand this stuff, and that's why I'm telling people, but if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, the people be not warned that the sword come and take away, take any person among them, he is taken in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hands. So I need to, that's my motivation, is to make sure I'm blameless, and I hope that you do the same thing and circulate this video, okay? Or make your own, I don't care. But we all have to start uh, uh, uh Putting, uh, notifying people, either you're part of the problem or you're part of the solution. You are now a watchman. Circulate this video far and wide. Other videos, Bankster Thieves 1, 2, and 3, Churchianity Series, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1 and 2, Unidroit, Martial Laws Here, Quasi-Contracts and Roman Civil Law, De Facto Courts, All Courts or Ecclesiastical Courts, D.C. Courts in Texas, Jurisdiction. Copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants. I've got YouTube videos that are videos of private information shares that show these and other court citations that are available for a donation. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept IOUs, Federal Reserve notes, PayPal gifts, checks, money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. That last paragraph is in there for the... Uh, the Satanist order follower revenue officers that think that they can they can uh, assault me uh, with their so-called uh, revenue collection activities, and uh, because I don't want anybody to think that I'm interested in their any benefits from their they can put their benefits up their rectal orifice uh, uh, by accepting their Federal Reserve notes. I don't want them. I'll take them, but I don't want them. If you find this useful, then you need to pay it forward. If you don't know what pay it forward means, then watch the movie. My blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. Some people have been sending me some success stories, and I've been putting them up there. Website is uh, sovereigntyinternational.fyi. Email is engineerwin at yahoo.com. YouTube profile, Sovereign Living. Facebook community kit page called Sovereignty International. Private group called Sovereignty International. Yahoo private group, Administrating Your Public Servants. And a Google private group called Administrating Your Public Servants. And I uh, appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. I hope you get something out of it and spread the word. We need to uh, put a top stop to this tyranny and um, and bring these tyrants to justice. That's what we need to do, okay? Remember, what's the Bible? Think about it. What's the Bible? The Bible is basically the, the story of the people of our struggle with Satanism. Right from the beginning where Satan is talking to Eve and talks her into eating the apple or whatever fruit it was. And uh, to the end, in the book of Revelation, Satan is conquered and exterminated off the face of this planet. Now, I'm looking forward to that day and I'm going to be in there doing some of the exterminating. And um, so um, I am looking forward to that so much. So let me tell you. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. And um, spread the word and have a real nice day.